Okay, I'm here at my friend John's and he's getting ready to fire up this locomotive. What, what was the number on it again, John? Uh, I don't mean the 722, I mean the wheel. Okay, well, you we call it when we filmed back in a year ago, April. It's a Pacific. Pacific. 462. Remember? 462. <laughs> you had a lot of viewers corrected us on that. Oh, did I have it wrong in that? Well, you had it listed as a Hudson. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know where I got that. Plus, we had quite a debate on that valve here, too, remember? I do. And that is a Baker. Yeah, so, it is a Baker. Yeah. It's, this it, it's a Baker valve gear. Lost it. All right. I'm going to get some coal from this other pile. <laughs> Spilled over the top, and it's just coming out of that. Oh, that's two piece. It's stainless in there. This is what we started with soaked. I've always just used soaked hardwood, but I'm using soaked charcoal this time. Okay, for starting only. Just to get it started. All right. So this is new for me. Plus the air, that's the induction to get air through there. Right here. Cool. Yeah. I believe you did uh, show that to me last yeah. time we talked about that. Little squirrel cage fan. And just, that? Just enough to draw the air. So he's got the little blower on. And he's putting the charcoal in the firebox. <laughs> you can correct me when I use the wrong terminology. <laughs> and there's some pieces of wood, hardwood in there also, I guess. Your, your listeners will correct both of us. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that they would be critiquing as much as they did. <laughs> I was glad. <laughs> We're all learning every day. I've learned a lot about it in the last two weeks because we had these drivers pulled down off of there to do some repairs up under there. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot I didn't know already. Go ahead and give it a see if it'll take off. I think it'll take about an hour to get steam up? Oh yeah. Yeah, it'll take a little bit. We There's only two and a half gallons of water in there. So you wouldn't think it'd take that long, but it does. Here comes the smoke. You got smoke. Oh yeah, that didn't take long. And you can see the smoke coming out of the blower already. Johnson bar, because if you have it in gear and it builds up pressure, it's going to take off on you. Oh boy, you got to make sure it's a neutral, he said. I know that from experience. <laughs> <laughs> Did it go off the end? No, no. That's a lesson to know. Hmm. I'm going to raise the up a little bit. Yeah. Okay. hot fire. <laughs> they say to keep the doors shut when you're starting it. You want the grates covered the best you can, that whole surface covered. 
They don't want any holes in the fire. Oops, oh, I missed it. And some of these engines got a real small opening here. I don't know how the guys get the coal in there. Maybe they're a little stir. Try to scatter it over the whole fire if you can do it. You need about 40 to get up a little bit of 40 and I can eliminate that that oh, motor up there. Okay. Because it'll develop enough steam to draw. And what is the working pressure of the engine? About 110 to 115 is where these safety valves are set. 110 and 115 they'll pop. We, we might get to that point today where they pop. Mm -hmm. One pops ahead of the other. John is checking the water level here and I, I hope you can see it there. It's in the, in the sight sun. glass. It's about right there is the line. Yeah. This is getting, let me see if I can wipe that off. Brake stand and uh, had some issues and we rebuilt it back. No. Yeah. You throw them on that way and off that way. So that's the brake valve? The brakes, controls okay. the brakes. You know, they work fine under air. Today's the first day under steam. Okay. Hopefully it'll work. And this, these are the injectors. Once it gets steam pressure, we can show how they work. It's been a, about a half hour, and we're starting to get just a little bit of steam coming out of the whistle. Uh, toot it, John, and see how much is there. Yeah, at least there's enough steam now to blow the whistle a little bit. We're getting some pressure finally. It's about up to 35 approximately. And at this point, there's enough of a draft where he can take the fan off. Wear gloves for this because it's hot. Now, can you see the brakes being actuated? I'm getting more pressure over it better yet. All right. I need to adjust this just a tiny bit. Not today, but sometime. That's the brake lever. Mm -hmm. This is puts pressure to it, and then it releases back here. You can see it's releasing now here. Yeah. All right. Let's hear it. Well, John's going to let the fire kind of die out now because uh, we've tested the brakes and the injector and uh, the, the whistle and so on. And of course, we can't take it on a ride around the property because the track ends right here. So it would be pretty short, maybe 18 inches of, of ride. So that's, that's really all we're going to do. If you want to see the wheels revolve, look in my other video where we uh, operate it under air. He's got it jacked up a bit. All right, we're going to run it to the station. Maybe if we got enough steam. There we go. Another foot to go. Now we can back up. And now back up. Well, that's about the extent of the ride, <laughs> if, if you will. And uh, but thank you, John, for uh, the demonstration, and I enjoyed myself. All right, let's take a look at the smoke box now that it's cooling down. 
And look at all the soot in there. That's all right, but let's look on through here and you can you can see all the way through, I hope. All through the tubes. Yeah, for its age. This is the South Bend lathe that John bought at an auction, and I might have shown it in that auction about a year ago. And he, I don't remember what he paid, but it was a very reasonable price. Well, it's under $300. It's like $275 or something. About, about $300. Yeah. But he said the motor burned out just this week. So, and it's a real old motor, so he went to the farm store and there's the new one so no sense rewinding it would cost more not to rewind it no it was and it was an open case when it just lets all the yeah. filings in there but this old lathe for what it is i really we we i've used it quite a bit already it was filthy when you saw it up there it's covered with sawdust that's right yeah he brought it home here blew the sawdust off and and this is the one you and I bantered over. You kept yeah. saying, are you sure you don't want it? <laughs> and I, no, John, you buy it. Are you sure? <laughs> well, I'm happy with it. Oh, yeah. And those ways are in pretty decent shape, aren't they? Oh, uh, yeah. But it's, oh, oh, here, yeah, we got a little problem. But I'm, for what it is, I was happy with it. There's my rules for a, even an odd on your, uh. on your uh, thread dial. Can never remember that. Ah, which is I? That one. Quick. It, no quick change. Right now, this is a, a Logan. It's a Logan. This is a Logan. And actually, I end up using this one more than that one. But this got the thread dial. That I don't do much threading on that. On this one. No. More on that other one. And I went to your friends at Lost Creek and put a new three jaw on it. Good. And they, uh, That's the working end. It, it's, uh, it's a pretty good one. Yeah, these are nice machines. He, uh, had to make the faceplate, and I, that was new to me, but I got it on there it's with only a few thousandths of hair, so I was happy with that. Oh, I got to show my wife. This was John's Christmas present last year, a Parker Vice, and what a beauty that is. semi-steel. Probably too dark on this side. <laughs>